According to medical experts, having ultra-processed food is always bad unless it's vegan. I know it sounds a little counterintuitive, a little bit conflicting, but let's review this opinion piece that was published in Clinical Nutrition Open Science by our friend Michael Greger, the author of the book, I think it's called How Not to Die. Uh, the title of this uh, opinion piece is, are ultra-processed plant-based meats better than the alternative? Okay. In brief, Dr. Greger makes the assertion that plant-based meat alternatives are across the board nutritionally superior to their meat counterparts. Now, I think this is really interesting because we, let's just think about the composition of a plant-based burger or a meat alternative. Usually it's soy, wheat, or corn-based, and usually the oils are, as you likely know, canola, corn, or soy, and you're not getting any creatine. The protein and the amino acid composition is dramatically different. We've reviewed a study that I can link to you uh, right here in the video where uh, individuals randomized people to have either a uh, plant-based meat patty or a actual hamburger and looked at muscle protein synthetic rates. And, actually, and what they found was that there was orders of magnitude higher uh, fractional muscle protein synthesis. It was about 40% higher in having just the, the basic burger patty versus the meat alternative and uh, plant-based meat patty. But let's get into this. I think it's, this is just incredibly fascinating. So uh, Dr. Gregor goes on to say, studies link high consumption of ultra-processed foods to increased risks of a variety of adverse health outcomes, including all-cause mortality. However, these associations appear to be largely driven by sweetened beverages, sugar-sweetened beverages, processed meats, raising the possibility that plant-based meats could ironically offer a solution to the ultra-processed food problem. Unlike other ultra-processed foods, plant-based meats rated as healthier than foods they are intended to substitute and similarly countervalue other negative criteria typical of ultra-processed products. Compared with plant-based meats, conventional meat has the inferior nutrient profile, higher calorie density, and more missing phytonutrients, and results in less satiety and more weight gain, gut dysbiosis, and oxidative stress. All right. Let's pick this apart one by one, shall we? This is really interesting. So evidently conventional meat has inferior, an inferior nutrient profile compared to plant-based meat. What nutrients are we talking about here? Like literally, I, I would love to just have like a, uh, a non-emotional conversation with it. Like, let's just talk logic here. What nutrients are we talking about? Are we talking about creatine, carnitine? Uh, are we talking about branched chain amino acids? Are we talking about zinc, iron, B12, methylfolate, um, riboflavin? Like what, what nutrients are we literally talking about here? Because when we're speaking about the wheat protein that is found in these plant-based meat products, it's not been fermented. It's bound up to phytates and enzy enzyme inhibitors and anti-nutrients and oxalates. And you know all the micronutrients found in conventional wheat and corn and soy, it, it, it's bound up to enzymatic inhibitors. It's, it's inaccessible. And so I'm not anti-grain, as many of you know. When I do eat grains, whether it's corn, it's nishtamalized. Uh, this is an ancient process, and we've talked about that with our friend Bill Schindler. We did a great episode all about how corn can be made more accessible, the nutrients in there by the process of nishtamalization, and how Native Americans and ancestral peoples have been doing this forever. And this is why when the Europeans just started eating corn like the Native Americans, there was pellagra all over Europe because the nutrients were not accessible because corn has historically been nishtamalized with wood ash and the Europeans didn't know how to do that. In the, in the same case, when you go to Europe and you have bread that has been properly fermented via the sourdough fermentation process, you have both probiotic yeast as well as probiotic bacteria that are breaking down all the anti-nutrients. They have phytase enzymes in there that are breaking down the phytic acid to make the minerals more accessible, to lower the gluten content, to make the wheat have a lower glycemic index, right? So when you're going to get a plant-based meat patty, the nishtamalization of corn and the fermentation of the wheat is it's not happening. These companies are not doing that. They're just giving you straight up corn or straight up wheat or worse, in my opinion, soy that has not been properly fermented. So this is the thing. I think soy, when it's fermented, is probably okay. You know, the goiterogens, the anti-nutrients, periodically consuming that might be okay. But how we're consuming soy and corn and wheat in this country is not consistent with how historically humans have been consuming these grain products. So 
all these ultra processed food companies are now selling imitation meat products that have not undergone the traditional cooking methodological uh, practices that make these foods more nutrient dense, right? And so when we compare the nutrient profile of a burger to a soy burger or corn burger or wheat burger, we're literally comparing apples to oranges because the nutrients in meat is accessible. There's no phytic acid. There's no goiterogens. There's no uh, anti-nutrients. There's no tannins. There's no oxalates. Like you're getting the zinc, the folate, the iron, the magnesium, the B12, the riboflavin, the carnitine, the creatine, the uh, branch chain amino acids. You're getting all these things right there. You don't have to like break down any of these anti-nutrients. So I'm really curious what Dr. Greger is talking about. Now, he continues on to talk about LDL cholesterol and this, and I just, I want to speak to that because I think it's really uh, important, but Friends, I just want to pause. If you're enjoying the content, hit that like button. I'm grateful that you were here. Now, since we're talking about nutrients found in meat, one of my favorite nutrients in animal flesh, uh, from whether it's fish, whether it's eggs, whether it's meat, is creatine. We talk a lot about creatine here. And one thing that a lot of people don't understand when it comes to creatine is to get creatine into your cells and into your brain, you need electrolytes. Numerous studies have found that when you concomitantly or you take concurrently creatine with electrolytes, you get better mileage from the creatine in terms of cellular hydration and in terms of athletic performance. So there's close to 1900 reviews on one of the only high potency creatine electrolyte combinations out there on myoscience.com. The electrolyte sticks are really unique. You're getting two and a half grams of creapure creatine from Germany paired with high quality electrolytes like magnesium, taurine, calcium, as well as sodium and potassium. So you can save by using the code podcast over at myoscience.com or click the link in the description below. You wanna take this around exercise, either before or during exercise. When you move your muscles, you actually increase the absorption of creatine into your muscles where it can help with cellular energy production and hydration during your exercise sessions. Okay, so getting back to the study. I just think this is so incredibly fascinating. These studies still talk about LDL cholesterol all the time. It's like, well, see, when you have a plant-based meat product, it lowers LDL cholesterol. How many studies do we need to you know, parse out to show that there's no consistent association with LDL cholesterol and long-term cardiovascular risk if HDL and triglycerides and metabolic health is optimal? There, there is no statistical association with high LDL cholesterol and long-term atherosclerotic plaque formation when people are metabolically healthy. Yet all these studies still kind of monomaniacally focus on LDL cholesterol and well, plant-based meat lowers LDL cholesterol. Well, what does it do to triglycerides? Some of these studies have actually found that yes, when you go on a vegan diet, your LDL goes down. This is, this is like physiologically, we understand mechanistically how this happens, but oftentimes triglycerides go up, which this may be news to you, is an independent cardiovascular risk factor. So that's something to consider. So he goes on to talk about how, well, you know, these, you know, even compared to uh, grass fed meat products and so forth, uh, there's more phytonutrients and nutrient density in plant-based meats. But I think it is important to understand that grass-fed meat and pasture-raised meat actually has uh, quantitatively similar amounts of phytonutrients compared to even grain-based products. So I think that's really important because, you know, what's going to be the main protein source in a plant-based burger? It's going to either be corn, soy, wheat, or pea. There's not extraordinary amounts of phytonutrients and and so forth in those products. You know, we're not, th these burgers aren't made of blueberries or beets, right? These are just straight up grains that don't have any phytonutrients. But when you actually look at some of the work that Stefan Van Vellet has been doing at Utah State University, pasture raised meat and grass fed meat and bison is phytonutrient rich. Like these are things that we should be categorizing as health foods because of the phytonutrient composition. And they're getting into the flesh because the rumen is amazing. When you think about the rumen of, of cattle, it's equivalent to uh, two to three kegs of beer in terms of its size, uh, trillions of microorganisms that are able to ferment all of the cellulose found in indigestible grasses and grains to us humans and convert that into microbial fermented protein that increases muscle protein synthesis in those animals. So I think mean, that's just really fascinating. So uh, in the study, he goes on to talk about, well, salmonella is the leading cause of foodborne illness. And then if you uh, eat a burger, you're going to get uh, toxoplasma and salmonella and all these things. And then, well, it lowers LDL cholesterol. And then the he even goes on to say that pollutants are 
higher, these forever chemicals are higher in uh, tested meats, but somehow kind of ignores the fact that that corn, wheat, and soy is heavily sprayed with all the persistent organic pollutants and so forth. So um, provides no evidence to suggest that plant-based meat is uh, devoid of these forever chemicals that are somehow in high, higher concentrations uh, in, in animal products. I, I think that's just really interesting. My friends, I, I just think that there's like propaganda out there and there's just a lot of a lot of push towards these plant based these imitation meat products um, because this is the biggest area of of food right now where you can invest in right like there's not a lot of money to be made in ranching um, and that's really why Procter and Gamble got into cottonseed oil and convinced Americans to shift away from butter and lard to to start to use cottonseed oil because it's so much cheaper. Um, think about it. you have to you know milk the cows and then churn the butter and then or get the lard from the pigs and so forth. And now you have this waste product that's converted to a food product, and uh, it's just there's a lot of money to be made in these plant based meat you know, like compounds and a uh, heavy, a lot of venture capital, heavy investment. And there's a lot of push, you know, for these mainstream doctors to uh, get on board with this and recommend this. Um, but I think we're sort of missing the forest through the trees. I would love to know what you think. And if you read this article and um, what your thoughts are, let me know in the comment section below my friends. To me, I think it's just funny. It, it's just like, okay, here we go again. So let me know what you think. I appreciate you watching all the way to the very end. I'll put a link to this journal article in the uh, description below. We'll catch you later.